Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're working on another knife project. It's a kitchen knife of sorts but with a heavy Japanese sword influence. But to make this one really stand out we'll be adding some serrations to make this one the ultimate bread slayer. I'm calling this one the bread katana. If that sounds like something you're into hang around to see how it was made. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more projects like this one. Let's get to it. I'll start with a 60-ish layer piece of Rainer Pattern Damascus that I've had lying around from another project. I need to kick this video off by saying I know that this isn't a sword. I'm not an expert on Japanese swords, but I'm sure this will be wrong to someone out there. With a steel hot, I'm going to draw this one down into a bit of a square. I'm going to add a few lazy twists to this bar, so I need to get it somewhere squarish for it to be able to evenly rotate. And that's looking close enough, so I'll chuck it up in the vise and bear down on it. I'm shooting for 7 to 8 full rotations on this one, as I want it to be quite dramatic, and I don't have a huge amount of steel here for the size of blade I'm hoping to make. That does mean that we'll have a bit of a surface line effect from not grinding deep into the core of this billet when it comes time to do the grinding. With a bit of sweat and determination, I've got this one twisted enough to start forging it into shape. I'll start by stretching it out into a flat billet and then move over to the anvil to set the tang. Then back to the press to try and get this one reasonably straight and that's looking close enough to what I should be able to turn into something. With the forging done, I'll give this one a thermal cycle to help the steel relax. It's the next day and it's time to get the profile set. I kind of want the tip to be a little upswept to give that katana kind of vibe and keep it as long as I can, but I'm starting to see here that I've forged this a little thin and I think I may have a mark or two in the finished blade. Thankfully this isn't for a customer. But with the profile set I can get this one into the kiln for quench. With the blade up to temperature, I'll get it into the quenching oil to make it harden. I was a bit worried about how thin this blade was and how much it might warp, but it's actually come out pretty straight thankfully, but I'll pop this into temper and see how it looks tomorrow. It's the next day and the tempering is all done, so off to the grinder we go. This part has me a little concerned. I've made a couple of blades this long in my life, but not many, and they've always fought me on the grinder. It's really important to keep changing sides really frequently as the blade will try to warp if we build up too much heat on one side. But with a little patience we can get the majority of the material removed without too much fuss. Now this is the biggest mistake I made on this project. In my attempt to stretch this one out as long as possible in the forging I have a few deep forging marks in the blade. Now this knife is just for me, so it's not the end of the world, but I'm sure I'll hate myself for years to come every time I look at it. I should have forged it a little thicker and not pinched as hard along the cutting edge, but we're here now and there's no turning back. And that's looking thin enough, so I'll jump over and set up my handle. Here we have a cool looking piece of stabilised spalted tamarind. This is one of my favourite woods. 
hoping the bold lines in the handle wood will work well with the bold twist lines of the Damascus. I'll square up the block on the miter saw and then cut off a slice that will become our bolster. Then hop over to the mill and cut a slot for our tank to poke through. Now for anyone paying close attention, I muff this one up. I cut the slot in from the wrong side and now the grains in the wood block won't line up. I feel really lucky this project isn't for a customer. But self-loathing aside, I'll get this one into the acid. With the blade grinding and the handle setup done, it's into the ferric for a few cycles to etch our Damascus for depth. I skipped the hand sanding on this one today as I'm planning another long blade project and wanted to use this one as a bit of a tester for some different processes. The results have come up pretty good and I'll make sure I document them better when that project comes around. And it looks like the tweaks in my finishing process have helped a lot. I've had trouble with low layer Damascus looking a bit scratchy when it comes out of the acid. But this one is looking really bold and that 15 and 20 is still looking nice and bright. And now for the step that will set this one apart. Time for the serrations. Now normally for this you would use a tilting work rest and lay the blade down on its side. Then bring it up to the contact wheel to set your serrations. That's the right way to do it and if you have a tilting work rest you should definitely use it. I have no idea how but I seem to have misplaced mine. And I'm feeling brave so I'm going to have a shot at free handing them. I've made a fair few serrated blades over the years, so I'm feeling okay about this one. I'll kind of use my fingers to space the blade away from the contact wheel and roll it in with my thumbs. If you watch really closely while it's happening, you can just see the belt break through on the back side of the blade to see where your radius is going. I'm not using any measurements here. The way I'm spacing these is letting the start of the radius break through just before the preceding tooth, and then applying pressure and moving the blade across to make the cuts line up. While I'm grinding away here, let's talk a little about serrations. You don't want to cut these very deep. Think of them more along the lines of little scallops in the side of the blade. If you cut deep, wild looking teeth, your knife will be inclined to tear everything apart and give a really poor cut. But the smaller you make the peaks in your teeth, the smoother the blade will perform. Think of it as a little zip on your knife's edge. All we need is a little bit to get it started, and then the geometry of the blade will do the rest. After cutting these all in with a 120 grit belt, I'll kick back over to an A45 Trizac and make sure everything is pretty even. You know you've gotten this just right where they don't feel particularly sharp. It shouldn't feel like a hacksaw blade when it's all said and done. Last thing on the serrations. Cutting them in with a wheel like this, they create a wicked burr that can be really tricky to remove. But drawing the knife through a piece of rigid cardboard a couple of times usually takes care of it. And they look pretty good. I'm not pretending that they're perfect, I did freehand them, but they're consistent enough for what I need. With our serrations cut, I can get this one wrapped up safe, apply my epoxy to everything and let it set overnight to cure. It's the next day and our epoxy is set up so I can get to shaping this handle. For the handle on this one, I want a bit of that same Japanese sword inspired look, so this one will be very simple. I'll shape the block into a bit of a rectangle and true it up to the blade. Then break the corners to give us a bit of an octagon shape. Then kick over to a J-Flex belt to round everything over and make it nice and comfortable. I'll give the handle a quick hand sand up to 800 grit and give it a buff on the polisher with pink compound. Lastly, a long soak in the coffee to bring out all that contrast and we're done. This thing is a beast. It's complete overkill for my needs, but it was a really fun one to work on and I got to try a few different things along the way. 
I'm a little disappointed in my forging mistakes that have shown through in the finish piece, but it's still a great kitchen tool, and it's not a bad thing to have some reminders of your mistakes around to help you get better. This one will be sure to make some appearances over on the Bites channel. Be sure to check it out if recipes are your thing. Thanks for watching everyone. If you liked it, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. See you on the next one.